Wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1,534 of our trek, and it is time for Meditation Monday. Taking time to relax, refocus, and reprioritize our lives is crucial in order to create a living legacy. For you, it may be just a time alone for quiet reflection, or you may utilize some sort of structured meditation practices. In my life, meditation includes reading and reflecting on God's Word and in prayer. It is a time to renew my mind, refocus on what is most important, and making sure that I am nurturing my soul, mind, and body. As you come along with me on our trek each Meditation Monday, it is my hope and prayer that you too will experience a time of reflection and renewing of your mind. We are continuing our series this week on Meditation Monday as we focus on Mastering Bible Study, through a series of brief insights from Hebrew scholar Dr. Michael S. Heiser. Our current insights are focusing on the accuracy of interpreting the Bible. Today, let's meditate on Bible study. Context is king, not your impressions. Insight number 43, context is king. We spend a lot of time talking about interpreting the Bible in context. The Bible is often interpreted out of context in some way, and I'm not exaggerating. When you know what is meant by context, it's hard to think otherwise. When most Bible believers hear someone insist that the Bible be interpreted in context, they usually presume the point is that whatever verse or verses they are reading or the pastor is preaching about needs to be interpreted in light of the verses that precede or follow it. While that is true, the verses before and after the text is just one context that needs consideration. Every biblical passage has multiple context. There is never just one context for interpreting the Bible. The worldview of the biblical authors is a fundamentally important context in which the Bible must be interpreted if it is to be accurately understood. The proper worldview context of interpreting the Bible is not evangelicalism, Catholicism, the Protestant Reformation, the Puritans, or even the modern world. The proper context of interpreting the Bible is the context in which it was written, and that is of the ancient biblical writers. Every other worldview is foreign to the Bible. The context means what we must do our best to think as the writers thought. Another context for interpretation is the literary context of the genre. A genre is a type of literature. Frankly, without knowing the genre, an accurate interpretation of word meaning is impossible. For example... If we saw the word descent in a document, it would matter a lot if the document was a genealogy, a landscape's architectural plan, a flight instructor's manual, or a doctor's note about a grave illness. All of these are genres, kind of writings. It's easy to see how they dictate the meaning. Just as today, there were many different genres used in the Bible by the writers. Lastly, every word has its own context in relation to other words. If you look up in the dictionary the word run, it has dozens of meanings. It can be a verb or a noun. We only know what part of speech it is when we see the other words around it in a sentence. That knowledge, along with different contexts, helps us to comprehend the intended meaning. All the above and more is why I like to say we need to interpret the Bible in context. There is more than one, and collectively, context is king. Let's move on to insight number 44. Impressions are no substitute for data. Good Bible study should affect the way we think and feel. Naturally, the process of discovery in Bible study will appear to the intellect because we've learned something. There is more to the life of the mind than the accumulation of facts. Other things are going inside our heads besides information story. Our emotions, our attitudes, our imaginings are just as much a part of our inner life as the intellectual processing power. All aspects of our thought life needs to be informed by good data, that is, things that are true and correct. Without real facts, our feelings, beliefs, and actions can be prompted by flawed catalysts. In the case of Bible study, truths that mold us in all the ways must be derived from biblical text. 
they cannot be the result of impressions or suspicions about something that might be biblical. Bible studies can easily be derailed by putting impressions on equal or superior footing to the data that is drawn from the biblical text. Attempts to calculate the return of Jesus are an excellent example of this. The biblical text tells us that no one knows the day and hour of the Lord's return, Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But that hasn't stopped a lot of Bible teachers and students from thinking otherwise. I've had many strange ideas come across my desk that can be filed under interpretation by impression. I'm convinced that the cable television and social media is the root cause of many of these. Examples include, asteroids have hit the earth in the past. I wonder if that caused the flood. Or part of the deserts have been irrigated in Israel. I bet that has something to do with Israel's prophecy. Speculating, especially about antiquity, is sort of fun. I enjoy it as much as the next person. The serious Bible student must clearly distinguish between speculation and exergesis. The latter is the domain of biblical text. The former is not. What we believe can either be coherently traced to the text or not. Building aptitude in Bible study will keep you oriented to that standard. And let's close with our verse for today. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. And that's a wrap for today's meditation. Next week we will continue our track on Meditation Monday as we take time to reflect on what is most important in creating our living legacy. On tomorrow's track we will explore another wisdom quote. This three-minute wisdom supplement will assist you on becoming healthy, wealthy, and wise each day. Thank you for joining me for this trek that we call life. Encourage your friends and family to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,533 daily treks or read the daily journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. And I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on your favorite podcast player so that each day will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, Learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.